Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm at the Stormtrooper and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series 86 Scourge. Released in January of 2021, he's brand new and starting to hit stores right now. As of the time of this recording, I found mine on the shelf at my local Target. This is a Voyager class figure and retails for approximately $30. So here we have Scourge packaged in that window box. He's already in robot mode, so we can see him right there. Over here on the side, we've got Studio Series 86 with some artwork of Scourge right there. And then on this side, we've got that 86 and some artwork of Scourge. Around the back, we've got product shots of Scourge, both in his robot and in his vehicle mode. So that's about it for the packaging. Let's get him opened up and check it out. Scourge, the tracker. And his huntsman, the sweeps. Okay, I've unboxed Studio Series 86 Scourge, and I love this toy. Scourge comes packaged with everything you see here. He's got his instruction sheet, which is purple over gray, which I guess it's a, a, appropriate for a Decepticon. Uh, simple, easy to read. He does have an attack mode, which is actually really, really cool. We'll get into that in just a moment. He also comes with his weapon. And uh, we'll just bring this in close. And it's a, it's a pretty good uh, facsimile of the original G1 weapon. We'll bring that one in real quick so you can see what those look like together. So, yeah, not a bad representation of the original G1 weapon, which I have dropped. And he's also got this little energy bolt, which has the... It's, it's the same as those blast effects that we've been getting lately. So you can attach this to the weapon. You can also attach this to the vehicle mode. And again, we're gonna be looking at that in a little more detail here shortly. And finally, he also comes with this really, really cool backdrop, which you saw in the intro just a moment. And again, this is, uh, or a moment ago rather, that you can use to recreate that famous scene from when um, Thundercracker was reformatted into Scourge. So yeah, very, very cool. We'll go ahead and set that aside and take a look at Scourge here in vehicle mode. And here in vehicle mode, Scourge is approximately seven inches long, about two and a half inches tall at the top of this turbine here. And he looks absolutely fantastic. This is such a great recreation or representation of his original G1 mode that we saw in that first movie. This looks really, really nice. Just kind of going all the way around. He's molded in that two-tone, uh, kind of like a purple, with, uh, uh, I guess we can call that a lilac. It's it's kind of like a grayish, lighty, lighter purple. Really, really nice. He's got that Decepticon symbol right there in the front, a little red dot in the uh, at the top there. And just kind of going all the way around. Very, very clean uh, vehicle mode. Now, he is the original shell former. So, you know, uh, we are going to turn him under and we are going to see some of the robot <laughs> underneath and um uh yeah they did a pretty good job with this guy in translating the the sign um so i don't know that there was really going to be a whole lot more that they could have done to hide this and not have a whole lot of cable hanging off his back so i think it's a good compromise and it looks really really nice we'll bring him down a little bit and we'll do some comparisons here for comparison he is with his original self i guess uh, before he became a uh, scourge he was thundercracker so you can see what these guys look like together it's a good voyager size figure so there you go there he is with thundercracker and then of course i would be remiss if i did not compare him to his original g1 self so you can see again you know where the inspiration came from where we were where we are uh, yeah these guys look really, really nice together. You can almost kind of make it to where this is Scourge and this is one of the sweeps. So very, very cool. Now the G1 figure did uh, do a nice job of hiding most of the robot. And I guess the new one did too. You can see the hands kind of peeking out there a little bit. But other than that, I mean, the legs aren't really even legs. Now, one thing that this figure is kind of sorely missing, in my opinion, is wheels. Where the G1 had wheels and you could roll it around. Uh, this one, you can't. This one just kind of 
sits there. So what are you going to do? Now, as far as the weapons go, you can take the weapon and plug it. you got ports on each side, so you can peg it to the side, just like that. And then again, you can take his little energy beam and you can peg it to the weapon itself. Or you can peg it up here to the top, just like that. Or I guess if you end up getting a couple of these, you know, you can do that. I don't know that that really even shot, but there you go. That's a thing you can do. Or you can put little blast effects on there, you know, whatever you want to do with it. So there you go. Now, there is an attack mode for this, which is kind of a halfway transformation. So to do that, we're going to open these panels down here at the bottom. And then we are going to separate the shells. They are tabbed in. It's, it's going to be near impossible to see, but they are tabbed in right back there. So we're just going to untab those. And these are going to be on a double hinge and you just kind of got to work them out. And you'll see that double hinge right there. So it's going to kind of come up and over. And you're going to do the same thing on this side up and over. Now, we're going to take the top of the vehicle here, open this panel up to reveal the head. And then we're going to bring this panel up. This is tabbed in here and here on the back of the legs. Just untab it and bring it up like that. And then we're going to bring the panels back in. Now, what we're going to do this time is we're going to take these little spoilers or intakes or fins or whatever these things are, these little pod things here. We're going to tab those right there. So go ahead and bring everything right back in again. And then tab that right there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Bring that down. Make sure that these don't turn on you. They've got to be over the uh, the hands. He is he's a little fiddly, but usually not as bad as he's being for me right now. Uh, that's just me because I'm in front of a camera. <laughs> I bring these back down again, and these are going to line up and push in all the way like that so that they're nice and smooth on both sides. Bring this down, and there you go. Now, this is the special attack mode uh, that you saw for that one scene in the movie where he was actually flying with his head uh, revealed. So that's how you get to that. And then again, in the instructions, it shows this being pegged in right here. So I guess that's a thing that you can do. So yeah, it's kind of silly, but it is screen accurate. We did say that in the movie for, for you know, for a half a second. Uh, we did see him do that. Um, I'm kind of wondering if it was just a... Uh, miss, uh, missed animation or, or an error in animation. I don't know, but it's really kind of cool that they did that with this figure. Continuing the transformation into robot mode, we've really kind of already started it, so we're just going to undo what we just did, which is uh, open up these panels, untab these side panels here, and then just kind of bring the wings out. So the wings are tabbed here and here, and then they're also, not the wings, the uh, front of the uh, boat here is uh, tabbed in in the front here. So just separate all of this. And then this is all going to, of course, now it doesn't want to play with me. <laughs> it's always when it's on camera. That's so funny. All right, let's see. That's untabbed, that's untabbed. So yeah, these should just go ahead and swing out just like that one did. And just like that one did. Cool. All right, so we're going to leave these open. Take these uh, intakes back here or these fins and push them down. This... Uh, Cover back here, this is going to fold in, and then this whole thing is going to hang. It's a double hinge here and here. We're going to just bring these up and over all the way. Same thing on this side, fold that in, and bring this hinge all the way up just like that. Go ahead and take, uh, this was already unpegged. We're going to bring this up, and there's several hinges here, and we're going to work it to where this hinge sits right in there underneath the collar. Just like that. And then we're going to bring this down and tab it into place. Now, we're going to bring this down. And then the wings here, this these two slots are going to tab in here and here. So bring this down. And then you can see this little cone piece here it just came down on its own. Go ahead and finish it off by bringing it all the way down. And then go ahead and tab those wings into place there. And let me get that in close. There. There we go. 
Okay, and then you, these are on hinges. You can bring these back a little bit if you want. And we're almost done. All right, we're going to untab the arms from the bottom of the legs right here. Bring these up, and these shoulder pieces are going to tab there and there. Tab that into place. Bring that down. Same thing on this side. Untab that. Swing it up. Tab the shoulder in place. Bring the arm down. Separate the legs. Come down here. Open up the toes. And open up the heels. There we go. And there is Scourge in robot mode. And he looks absolutely amazing. Here in robot mode, Scourge is approximately six and a half to seven inches tall. So again, he is a very nice size Voyager class figure. Let's bring him in close and take a look at all the detail. Look at this head sculpt. He looks absolutely amazing. He just, again, looks like he stepped out of the movie. So these, what they're doing in, in, in translating those uh, 2D animated models and making them a real life 3D thing that you can hold in your hand. They're doing just such a great job because that just looks so amazing. Look at the beard, the scowl on his face, everything. He just looks really, really nice. Love that collar. And going down, you got that Decepticon symbol right there on the chest. You got those ribbed abs. You got those red fingernails just going all the way down. The only, only, only thing that I could probably fault this on is that the toes are not red. Uh, the toes should have been the right, same color as the fingernails. Other than that, this is just an absolute perfect representation of Scourge. Going all the way around, not a whole lot of backpack. He's got about as much backpack as you can expect from a figure who is a shell former. And again, he was the original shell former. So, um, you know, I really like the way they worked the design of the wings where the tips... And then these little wings that open up on the bottom here, they kind of make that bat cape kind of a thing that looks exactly like he did in the animation. The only added kibble are these two pieces that are hanging down here. That's really kind of it. If they would have found a way to fold these up to where you couldn't see them from the front, this probably would be a perfect figure. And again, like I mentioned, these are on hinges, so you can angle these back a little bit. Heck, you can bring them all the way back like this if you want. Um, that's going to actually make it kind of difficult to stand. He is going to be back heavy if you do that. So I kind of, I just like to find kind of a, a halfway point there. Um, basically I find these and I try to get these fins straight that way, perpendicular to the body. And that's what works for me. And just kind of going the rest of the way around. He looks really, really good. Articulation wise, the head is on a ball joint. So you've got up and down, left and, uh, <laughs> oh, one more thing. Uh, one step I forgot, this little piece up here, you can turn this around. There you go. All right, so the head forward and backward, side to side, tilt, all that good stuff. Shoulders can go forward and backwards, cannot go all the way around because of the wings. You can go in and out. You got a rotation at the bicep, a bend at the elbow, and a rotation at the wrist. You do have a waist rotation. Legs can go forward that far, back that far, in and out. You have a rotation at the thigh, bend at the knee. The toes and the heels can open and close a little bit. And then, of course, you've got your ankle tilts as well for wide stances. Really, really nice. So, again, we'll bring in his weapon. And, you know, I, I like the way that he's got the one fist um, closed and then the one fist open because you can actually do this kind of a dual hand wield like that. And he looks really, really nice that way. Check that out. And, again, we can give him his little blast effect. There you go that looks super super nice now for a couple of quick comparisons one more time here he is with the shell of his former self thundercracker so you can see what he looked like before and after uh you know and again the uh, uh it's they they really do look like they belong they're they're from two different collections earthrise and the studio series but they do kind of look like they belong together side by side on the shelf that really does work it looks really really nice Another comparison, here he is, of course, with his G1 self. And I find it kind of amazing that the G1 figure is actually taller than <laughs> this new one. Um, he just felt so big in hand when I first opened him and I first started playing with him. He felt so large. And then today when I got this guy down off the shelf and I put him side by side, I'm like, oh, okay, he's kind of short, but still a very nice size. But there you go. There's what these guys look like together. And one more bonus comparison. Here he is with his leader. Galvatron, and this is the Titan Returns Galvatron. Um, I, I'm hearing that we're supposed to be getting a new Galvatron, 
But, you know, uh, as it is right now, I think this is the best representation of G1 Galvatron that we've got. So this, this really works, and they look so good together. That's a good size comparison for the two of them. Uh, I don't know. That just that just works. Let me see if I can get them a little more side by side. So there's there you go. Uh, yeah, that really works. I think that looks fantastic. So again, I'm just so happy that I was able to find this figure. Um, there for a second, I was saying I was thinking I was going to put this figure and Cyclonus on my shelf with uh, my masterpiece figures because these these really are kind of this one and, and that new hot rod that just came out. They're like little mini masterpiece figures. They really are. The level of detail on them are fantastic. Both modes are, are represented perfectly. The transformations are fun, but easy to do. And they just look so perfect. And I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to get Cyclonus and Scourge, put them on my on my masterpiece shelf. Unfortunately, uh, they're not quite big enough for a masterpiece scale. So oh, that's all right. Still fantastic figure. That's going to look great with my Galvatron and my Earthrise and my Kingdom figures and all that. So I think that about covers the Studio Series 86 Voyager class Scourge. What did you think of this figure? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. I've got a donate button up there. If you want to hit on that, I certainly would appreciate it. Please share with your friends if you like what you see, and I'll talk to you next time.